Militant mind, the general nine grip The grip with blades and a pen that can sharpen your spine's tip Level headed though my mind flips from side to side With an acrobat's experience after I stick it I'm lyric down a demon possessed I he seems Jay's the best for the job with no What's the word, y'all? It's KTL underscore podcast and the Rose podcast You are now live and direct with your boys Cinco, Big Hard, and j himself For Season two of episode three of Know the Ropes podcast. My brothers, how are, well, uh, well, Jabo, how you feeling today? You look like you just down the dumps right now. You really gonna ask me that question, right? I mean, now. I usually ask everybody how are y'all. I say how are my brothers doing today. I do that, but I want to ask individually today. So, Jabo, how you feeling today? So today you decide to ask individual. Okay, yes. you know, I'm gonna play your game. Okay, Thank let's you. do. Cool. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, keep me in your thoughts. Mm-hmm. I am currently suffering from pneumonia. I got chills and I'm also hot at the same time. I'm on drugs. I'm in the bathroom every few minutes. And quite frankly, I do not feel like being up at the moment. But apparently the show must go on. So Cinco, I guess I'm okay. That's great to hear. I'm glad to hear you're alive and well. You're on the show. See, this is dedication right here. He is a true team player. He took one for the team. He, he ran away from the hospital to hop on Zoom so he could have this podcast. My brother, thank you. Big Horn, how you feeling today? Feeling better than my man, Jay bo So, oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you know, can't really complain today. Uh, that, that is true, because I don't know what kind of people get sick in the summer. But before we get started with this episode I- three, <laughs> I- <laughs> be sure there's one simple favor for us before we get started. Follow us on all social media platforms, KTL underscore podcast, Twitter and Instagram, Know the Rose Podcast, Facebook, YouTube, Know the Rose Podcast on all podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Podbean. We are on everything. And don't forget to get your merch as well at prowrestlingtees.com slash KTR podcast. Buy a damn shirt. Buy two shirts. Buy, buy a damn shirt. Buy a shirt. Yeah. yeah. Help help pay for J Bo's medicine, man. He need he need all the guap. He need all yeah. the guap. He's suffering all right now. He like he the lights he are hurt. real dim in his camera because he's sweating horribly. But yeah, but we're gonna get started with the show anyway. First topic of discussion for today. Um, uh, we're gonna let's see. We we're gonna um Go to the Uso Penitentiary real quick for us. We're going to talk about the family, the bloodline, the work that's being done. We're going to speak with my man's Jimmy Uso. Unfortunately, in recent events, he was pulled over and yeah. got charged with another DUI. Yeah, yeah. Again. He he um no he, he has a recent uh DUI charge in the past. No, he had a recent run with the police like a couple of years ago. But from the DUI situation, he's been clean for a good amount of years. Then just recently he just got pulled over for that. And then everybody's wondering what will happen in the future with Jimmy Uso. Because if Jimmy Uso had God forbid, if he did get released from his contract, that would not only hurt him, but also hurt his brother as well because they are a well-known favorable tag team and stable and also it will really hurt the storyline that is going down between him his brother and the head of the table Roman Reigns with this though um no don't really know too much about anybody's personal life and what they go through and you know their family household or what goes on through their mind uh, we don't know if he could have a personal drinking problem. We don't know if he just has a bad luck with just going out and having to drink and unfortunately getting pulled over during the time period. We don't know. But thankfully, no, he's good. He's safe. He still has a job because he was just recently on SmackDown. And if he does have a quote-unquote problem with drinking, you no, know, you know, which he – find the best help he can possible. Wish him uh, good luck and anything he helps to find himself, you know, to get the healing that he needs. Me personally, I don't think he necessarily does have 
a drinking problem. I just think it's just it's just bad luck. He just gets pulled at the wrong time, possibly. You know, I mean, think about it. everybody. Well, not everybody, but like no normal common people drink and stuff like that. And like, if a person that's you know you shouldn't be drinking and driving, you know, people will do it. They'll have a couple of drinks here and there, and then they'll proceed to drive their car because some people think they could drive well drunk. But big hard, Jay. Well, how y'all feel about this situation? I feel very similar to you. Um, you really don't know anybody's personal issues. He doesn't really exude alcoholic to me. He, um, yeah, it might just be wrong place, wrong time. It's just that it happens so frequently, um, at least for what his position is, that it's looking like it's going to be problematic in the future. Um, WWE is pretty good at, at cutting people out of storylines. I think they'll be able to explain it. Only one of them was there for the longest anyway. Um, he was out with injury so it's really I, I don't think it'll cause that much of an issue as far as storylines go I just don't want it to affect really you know what I'm saying as, as, as hard as it is for jobs right now especially for professional wrestlers everybody getting cut everybody's future is just up in the air um, I would hope that he would be more careful with his position and with um, with his health and, and, and really everything regarding what's going on in the country and going on in the wrestling industry so it was more irresponsible to me um, but I, I do, I do think that it isn't like a super chronic problem, or at least I hope that that's not it. We don't know anybody's personal life, but yeah, um, hopefully he doesn't get, get the can for this one. j Bo. We're talking about Jimmy Uso. Okay. Uh, Jimmy and Jay need to stop saying Uso penitentiary because apparently they're taking it way too seriously. Uh, Here's the thing with Jimmy. Nothing. <laughs> dude, dude, man, y'all can't do this to me. Nothing's going to happen to Jimmy. Here's why. Jimmy, Jimmy and Jay, they're both related to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is currently Vince McMahon's favorite play toy at the moment. Heck, Roman Reigns is the locker room leader. Whatever he says goes. That's family. That's bloodline, both inside and outside the ring. That's why Jimmy was able to come right back on SmackDown right after that DUI. And it isn't the first time that happened, too. They're going to be fine. Heck, if it happens again, more than likely it's going to be fine. Nothing's going to change with the gimmick. Heck, I remember texting y'all that I think it'll be more interesting to involve that into the storyline. Will it happen? More than likely not. Uh, but no, nah, nothing's going to come out of this. Yeah, just unfortunate events. But hey, if y'all going to keep doing that... Then yeah, Uso Penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I love this version of Jay, but I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> oh nonsense. Right. Oh bro, you he said like that straight to the there. point and the king and his tone was just A1 with it. But like I agree with both of your points right there, especially <laughs> the addition with J Bo saying that family. Vince's favorite guy, you know, they're not going to let nothing happen to him because it's it's pure money right now, and that's kind of what's needed on the show. Grant, the WWE is not pleased with this because, obviously, once this happens, it goes out in the public. Now, it's about looking, and they think, like, okay, there's somebody regular or random. Oh, yeah, they'll get punished, but, no, since it's Jimmy, it's like, uh can't really cut you because we cut you, then it's not gonna look right with Jay Uso being by himself for too long. Then you gotta look at you know, the whole uh, you no know, storyline establishment they're trying to get right now. It's gonna mess up everything. They're trying to make going for a good amount of time, at least by the WrestleMania. So that's what they're trying to keep. They want these people who have the tag team title and the universal title all in one, so they just make them look stronger. And they eliminate Jimmy is gonna eliminate the whole process and plan. They gotta go back step one. And it got to go through the whole writer's block situation again. And nobody wants to do that, especially not the writers, because they're going through a tough time right now. But we're going to move past that. We're going to go to the next topic at hand. And let's talk about, um, man, let's, let's go and get this to real quick. Since I'm talking about WWE and SmackDown, fans are about to come back soon. Real soon. By the time y'all hear this episode, that's when fans will be back in the stands again of WWE. Been a long time coming. And this wasn't actually on the topic that we had at hand that I plan to send out to y'all, but we're going to speak on it real quick because it's going to jump to my next topic. 
the pandemic era was a hell of an era. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> and I know we've spoken of this before in the past about, you know, how wrestling, especially with the WWE, was going to adjust with no crowds, no fans, what they did for that short amount of time when they were in the PC. Then trans just uh, transitioned over to the Thunderdome with the automated sounds and they had to brought the pyro back and everything just to get like a little bit more of an authentic feel. And personally, I'm kind of going to miss the no fans at wrestling shows because it displayed more character out of these wrestlers during that time period that we may have saw and maybe we never didn't see from these other wrestlers. And we got to um, hear more interaction between the wrestlers because there was no talking. So you got to hear everything that was even said, which made it more entertaining, more fun. We saw who had more personality, who didn't have personality. So with that, are y'all... Are y'all going to miss the no fans at the shows, or do y'all want them back? Hell no, nah, I ain't going to miss no fans. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? They ain't got nothing to feed off of. You more entertained by them just talking to each other. You're supposed to feed off of the crowd. It's, it's, it's like the whole basis of wrestling, or not the whole thing, but but a large hey, you portion. You like me right there. Saying, saying the right <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you got. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not a fan. I'm not as big a fan watching them and then the fake sounds and yeah, you know. So it's obviously fake. It's so much production that goes into it. I'd much rather have the live crowd back. So I'm. I'm. I'm good on it. They <laughs> keep them. Them video screens. Pack them up. <laughs> Sell me a couple. I need some. That'll work. But uh, yeah, I like yeah. the PC better than they did Thunderdome. Honestly, I liked it just. No, I didn't like Thund Thunderdome at all. It was really. Yeah. Too much, um, you know, it's, it's too fake. Not really, not fake. It's you know, all the all the sound being pumped in and yeah, you know, crowd there. Why y'all even doing that? That's it's really corny to me. It's like canned laughter on a sitcom. It's not necessary. <laughs> Jay, boy, how you feel? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, great. I mean, true. Everybody else and their mama are opening up anyway, so it's bound to happen. Just. Don't breathe on nobody. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. All right, so with that, since we're going to bring the live crowds back, it looks like WWE has uh, bring on a partnership with the Rolling Loud concert, and they're going to be having a showcase in Miami yeah. in a few short weeks with Friday Night Smackdown showing that. And that that's actually going to, that's actually good because they're trying, I guess, the first fight of the crowd, trying to bring wrestling more to life to a a different audience, or maybe for people that haven't watched wrestling a long time, they bring it back like, oh, snap, look at that, and look at and look at this, you know, they're probably going to bring some popular wrestlers that will probably appeal more to the crowd, like a Roman Reigns, probably Bianca Belair, hopefully they bring Sasha so they can see her too, somebody like the Street Profits, you know, something to get more... The blacks. The Blacks. <laughs> yeah. Let's say they're going to bring the Blacks out, parade them in front of the Blacks, the Black hippies out there yeah, to, to get more Blacks to watch wrestling. Yeah, oh, come on. That's all you had to say. <laughs> They'll send the blacks out there, <laughs> or the black adjacents, the colors. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna bring. Move. They're gonna bring out a certain wrestlers to appeal to this new crowd uh, of people uh, at uh, Rolling Loud. Uh, 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 Truth gonna get out there do his shuck and jive. What's up? You gonna do all? Yeah, yeah. They not, they yeah. not bring our truth. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, truth gotta go. He got the dance. He got the song and dance. He gotta go. Yeah. But he money around. They're gonna do it for SmackDown now. Yeah, you're right. Unless it becomes 20 special import. champion. Special import. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. So I got, well, you already spoke your two cents about the road. Like, <laughs> I do like it. I mean, I think I think it's smart. Um, but I've had the same feelings as you. I just, you know, see it for what it is. It is they going they gonna bring the black wrestlers out. Because um, I mean, most of the wrestling fans I know of are are stoners, you know. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> it, it, it spoke a little bit. So um it's, it's really a perfect partnership. Um, I don't think people realize how significant wrestling has been to hip hop over the years, even though um, they haven't really been the most receptive of black people in the industry. But um, a lot of wrestlers love, I mean, a lot of um, rappers really enjoy wrestling, especially old school wrestling. So um, I think it's a, it's a good mix. I just know what it's for. It's just, you know, they there to pilgrim. That's the, that's, the, that's the word. There it is. There the film. J Bo. Mm. Rolling loud, dirty. How oh, you feel about oh. it? Black people. That's what it was. 
Wait, 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 wait. Um, it is the greatest episode of all time. Okay, wait. So Rolling Loud. Okay, we all know what the hell Rolling Loud is really for. Black people and weed. Okay, so if uh, I said earlier, if if Matt Riddle, Rob Van Dam, um, I don't know somebody else that gets high as hell. If they're not involved, I don't care what show it is, and it's a missed opportunity. Might as well take advantage of the largest crowd that you can get. Um, I would have never saw this coming, but yeah, black people and those who like weed. I think this is a great business opportunity. Whatever. This is a great business opportunity. People gonna get involved to it. And people be involved with social media too. All the memes I've seen has been funny going around saying when Randy Orton catch Soulja Boy on stage, that was hilarious. Ooh. <laughs> that great. That would be great. That was funny as hell. I, I couldn't stop laughing. There was, there was a bunch of other funny memes that was showcased on social media, but I can remember I remember that one out of the top. But moving on from that topic, we're gonna go into this, the new topic at hand. We had some debuts this past week from a couple actually so there are a couple still right okay let's make yeah. sure. I know if they, maybe they broke up and then like that i don't know I'll keep up the, the personal lives but yeah so it looks like we had zelena vega come back on the show she is back with the wwe again and <laughs> her man Formerly known as Alistair Black, but now known as Tommy End. Malachi Black. Malachi Black. That was his Tommy End was his original name. Malachi Black is his AEW name. Well, Mr. Black. There you go. <laughs> is now with AEW. Now, how, how y'all feel about uh, this? I, they really, uh, well, we already said how we feel about Alistair Black getting dropped from the It was a Dropping the ball in their end. No, they're going to hopefully AW no manages him well on how a missed opportunity was made at WWE. And hopefully the whole thing was Liam Vega uh, situation. You know, I understand come back. Money is money. Everybody needs money. That's a fat contract you can't pass up on. I'm sorry. You know, and you know, she probably will bring some good quality over to the women's division as well. I could see that. You know, love her personality, love. Um, everything she does what might work. No rain work is still good. It's gonna improve too. So, how y'all feel about the whole situation with them coming back to TV? I feel like WWE never knows what they're gonna do long term. Like they don't have the slightest idea. That that made no sense for them to fire that man and hire his wife back after all that crap they just went through with her. It's just it's silly. I don't I don't understand the strategy behind it, but um. AEW was really just looking like a another a more high quality um WCW. impact with, uh yeah WCW with Jason type thing because all they're doing is collecting who gets fired the best of them of course and throwing yeah. them back out so right now it's 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 getting harder to really find it's it's very few organic people that they're building themselves and that always becomes a problem when you start looking long term at who's been on top, who's been their title holders, who's really helped build that company. And it's going to look like it's all, it's on the back of all WWE guys. Um, and even though a lot of them were mistreated or, you know, weren't done right. And I do think this is a good move for him because they are more his speed. I just feel like it's going to hurt their reputation until they can start building some of their own guys, which they do have a couple, but not enough because they're really used counting on that star power that was built by WWE to bolster. Um, what they have going on with their programs. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's a good move for everybody. Everybody making money. Everybody's cool. I love seeing Zelina Vega. Glad she's wrestling finally. Um, she's not the best in ring, uh, but she does have an upside and she has plenty of time to, um, you know, work her way up. She's good on the mic. So, yeah, it'll work out. j Uh Lena Vega, I'm not surprised with. Um, they offered a check that was bigger than her mouth, so she cashed it and went with it. Uh, however, with with Malachi Black, AEW is just digging a bigger and bigger hole for themselves that eventually they can't get themselves out of. They keep hiring these obviously potentially big names, but they still got Kenny Omega, Young Bucks at the top of the scene. So eventually what's going to happen is they're going to feud with these guys that comes in. 
Kenny Omega wins, Young Bucks wins, and then these new guys that had a big bill, now they're reduced to mid cards or whatever, or they're going to put focus on a, a guy that comes in, and now you're going to forget another wrestler that already had a big pop that went nowhere. Why? Because they got too many wrestlers to really push. And to your point, they, they are not building anybody organically for themselves they're not and because of that AEW is is now becoming kenny omega uh young bucks cody rhodes and x wwe that's that's all it is that's all it is so i i'm, I'm happy that malachi black is on another wrestling scene but um it, it, AEW just too packed right now, and with Andrade here too, they're they're just too packed with good guys that they don't know what to do with. They gonna end up in the same situation they were in in WWE. They ain't gonna have nothing to do with them. You just collecting yeah. them to have them. Mm-hmm. Well, that made that, tra- that transition easy for me because I ain't got to speak on it no more. Because I'm gonna ask about AEW. Feel like it's too stacked right now. But thank you, Jabo, for filling the information mm-hmm. with me. You know, you're a real trooper. You know. <laughs> You know, scholar up there too. Yes, <laughs> My head is banging, dude. That's fine, but we're gonna keep banging with this last topic at hand. So hold on, we're gonna get through this episode. Last topic of the day, we're gonna talk about. Uh, we should have actually talked about this on the last episode, but it came out after we put the episode out. So WWE did a top fifty uh, ranking of tag teams, and number one on that list was. The New Day. Can't argue with their accolades. Mm-hmm. All those championships they have between them, not only with, you know, the tag team championships, but shoot, other titles as well with the mid core and the main title. So with that, New Day being number one, do you agree with that, yes or no, and why? No, not number one. Uh, top yeah. five, absolutely. Top three even, maybe. But not number one. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, they basically got the John Cena treatment as far as being given titles and title shots because they were the best thing going for the tag division at that time. Um, tag division hasn't really been popping as far as being deep and having all these different tag teams and all these different matchups. Like they pretty much had to repeat the same few matchups over and over again. And while they kept them interesting, fresh and the promos are out of this world. Like everything they did was on fire. They didn't really have the right opposition. All they had was the Usos to bounce off of, and um, a couple teams more recently. But nothing with them has really been classic. Um, so I'd put them. I'd put them probably in the top three, top five, definitely. But I wouldn't put them at number one. They Ooh. definitely deserve all of the accolades that they um, get and all the praise that they get, and they deserve to be in contention for number one. But I wouldn't give them number one. So who would be number one in your book? Mm. Right. Since you're not giving, so you're not gonna give number one. Who'll be number one? <laughs> Back to me. Think on it. All right, cool. Jabo, how you feel about the Uso? I mean, not the Usos. New Day being number one. It's arguable. It's arguable, and it, the main reason why it's arguable is because when they came together, they wasn't even supposed to last this long. They wasn't. They wasn't supposed to last this long. They wasn't oh, supposed man. to be the gimmick. They was. They wasn't supposed to be tag team contending wrestlers, uh, former WWE champion out of this. It wasn't supposed to be any of that. It was just three black wrestlers who honestly was directionalist, who came together and turned out with a Kirk Franklin. uh, Oh, actually, no, it was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Malcolm X-like gimmick, and then went to Kirk Franklin. So you see, it just jumped around. It, It had nothing serious, but they made something out of, nothing and they went far with it so yes it's arguable um what i put them as number one no but then again i can't tell you who i would put number one because no matter who i pick it's always arguable so top three definitely it is amazing that they did take a whole malcolm x slash kirk franklin gimmick into Mm -hmm. videos and pancake throwing Mm -hmm. And now they're at the, the, the pinnacle of their career where New Day is just the New Day and they just do whatever they want, you know, in and out on the microphone. They, they're past the gimmick stage and just be the regular people and do whatever they can and do just to appeal to the crowd. And that's the ultimate goal of being a wrestler. When you get out the gimmick stage, just be yourself. 
Because once you pass that, you you're free to do whatever you, you want. want. You, you won. Said, you did. You did win. Yeah, because that's really what they try to do. They try to get you to that gimmick stage. Once you pass the gimmick stage, okay, free to do whatever. You can be you. But with New Day being number one, I mean, can I disagree? It's, it's really hard to honestly. You know, the only people I could think that could match up to it would be somebody like. You know, I guess you no know, truth, a uh, truth tag team like the Dudley Boys, for instance, maybe the Hardy. Uh, number one. Yeah. The, or, the Dudley's is number one, in my opinion. The Usos, <laughs> they're, they're top five, in my opinion, something like that. But I, I see this is the thing about, and that's arguable for me, it's between New Day and the Dudley Boys, because, mm. and I kind of give New Day the slight edge because with the New Day, because usually with tag teams, more likely they get broken up because either A, they were just two really separate people that were just brought together, like somebody like The Bar, Chris Jericho, and Big Show, Edge, and Randy, or something like that. They just get brought in for a short period of time. Cesaro, bring, you, say Cesaro and you say what? Cesaro and anybody. Right. Yeah, Cesaro and anybody. They just bring, in and bring <laughs> them up. Or if it's like an original tag team that comes in, there's no balance with that tag team because there's a favorite in that tag team. Once they get broken up, that favorite gets pushed and the other person drowns in the car and just get or gets banished. With the New Day, they're all pretty equal at this point now. It took a while for us to figure it out and for to develop for <clears throat> obvious reasons. But at this point, you can see them as all equal. They all can hold their own if they were placed on you know, solo runs. And think about it, with them, I'm glad that they can still pursue, you know, a solo run while still being together. Nobody has to turn on somebody. Nobody has to break up or anything like that. So Xavier ain't did shit by himself. You said what? Xavier ain't did nothing by himself. Not yet. But like I said, I can I, see. I, right now, they could be seen as equal. No, they can't. No, they can't. That's why I said right now, because he's building up to that point right now. Building up ain't the same as... as <laughs> right? They both got single title runs, multiple. Now, most of Kofi's came before they grouped up. Right. <clears throat> but um, he got world title with the group. Big E broke off from the group and won a mid-card title. And Xavier ain't did nothing but share a tag team titles. So he while I feel level, he's always been on par with them. But as far as I don't think that the crowd sees him as equal to the other two. The WWE. Don't even see him as equal. Yeah, as WWE him. definitely. <laughs> let's let's just be honest here. If he ever goes on his own, just like the other two, he will be reduced to catering in four months. He is gonna sink. No, yep. I do not see him successful singly. Yeah, that that's just based off the right. He he can't hold his own. Not he like, can't. He, he can. He really can. And he's arguable. He's actually the best talker of the three. Oh, he definitely yeah. is by far, True. hands yeah, down. Best talker of the three, hands down. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's my. I mean, you know, because we see it, we we do this. You know what I'm saying? We see it. I just don't think that the average wrestling fan, the casual fan, sees Xavier Woods as an equal to Big E and Kofi. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and he did acknowledge that on TV when he had that little argument back and forth with Lashley. He said he may not see me at the yeah. same level, but. In my mind, he's there. You no, know, once they give him like an actual opportunity alone, he could probably get it himself. It's probably gonna take a situation where, shoot, like if Kofi and Big E get injured and he has to pursue alone, like what happened with Big E, how he got pushed because Kofi and Woods got injured. You know, that'd be the only way I could see it. Or if they have a King of Ring tournament and he just magically wins because he's been pushing that for a long time and yeah. he, he probably deserves it if it happens. So yeah. yeah, so I agree with that. But like tag team. Of all time, for me, it's between them and the Dilly Boys. So I'll give them top two, in my opinion. Mm, okay. Cool. 
And with that, that is all the time that we have for today for our show for a season two of episode three of Know the Rose podcast. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for tuning in. And don't forget to go check out our social media at KTR underscore podcast, Twitter and Instagram, Know the Rose podcast, Facebook, YouTube, Know the Rose podcast on all podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Podbean. We are on everything. And don't forget to get your merch at prowrestlingtees.com slash KTR podcast. This is episode two season three and we are out this is it this is season two episode three that's what i said not what you said i swear i probably said that season three episode two. i said episode two you season... go back wait go hold back. on <laughs> go back. it's right. too late we are we are advanced to it i, I fixed it for you this is season two episode three ktr and we are out. Paul is on fire. Just tell them already. <laughs> Bump those numbers. <laughs> Get this man some antibiotic shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, he is sick. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the best episode ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Numbers, letters, all symbols of man made devices that could cripple us all. Improve we can't cave. Panic and with storm hits and knocks out the power grid. Are you fully prepared to live off the grid? How you think?